Studio. Check. Frequencies check. We are live on air. You are listening to the impact blessing the airway. Come on. Take the journey into the world of sports, news, entertainment, while embracing the hottest beats on the planet. Come on, Rocking the mind, body, and soul. energy, electricity, and a splash of controversy. Okay. Now, without further ado, it's our pleasure to bring to you the biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The SBTV Nation. In the house, we have the biggest show in the world. We are on the cusp of Wild Card Weekend. We got exciting matchups all day today. I'm here with my boy, the Mad Hatter. And yo, if you can't hear the excitement, then you must not be listening. Yes, sir. Dream, we are ready. The NFL playoffs start today, my brother. Yo, I'm wait. so excited, man. I, I can't listen. I can't contain. The excitement for today, we are about to start this new year off. I am expecting to start this new year off dead right. I got some ideas about tonight. I got some ideas about this afternoon. I got to get into this. But first, before we start. Yes. I do need to discuss this for a minute. What do you got? About three days ago, you come on the show and plug the Grizzles being booty. Because they are. (laughs) It is sure enough last night. They go into Golden State and win, Dream. Go to Golden State and beat the Golden State That's Warriors. That's because the Golden right State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors said the t- Grizzles are booty. So please, Hat, can you do me a favor? Please, right now, if I can get you to say the Detroit Lions are booty <laughs> and the Houston Texans are booty, uh, I think I have the kiss of death. Uh, you can give them the kiss of death. <laughs> well, you know what, Dream? They had Golden State had a 24-point lead in the fourth quarter and lost the game. Lost the game and just basically took their foot off the gas. I don't know what the hell happened to that team, but you know what? I didn't bet the game. Okay. But if I did, I would have lost. Right. I just cannot. Bl- I mean, it, it, the Grizzles stink. Okay. And just to see what happened to Golden State there is kind of crazy. Well, the first thing about Golden State is that Golden State does dumb stuff like that. I of mean, course we, they do. We've seen them do that all season long. They still have a pretty stellar record at home. Uh, ninth, nine games out of ten, they probably beat the Grizzles. Not a big deal. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. We've seen the Cavs drop dumb games as well to stupid teams when they're not supposed to. So right. I'm not going to go too crazy, crazy about the Grizzles last night. Big deal. On the flip side of that, we had a stellar Friday night again, gang. I don't know if you listened to the show yesterday, which I hope you did. Yep. I don't know if you followed the plays, which I hope you did. But... Definitely redeemed myself from the night before, especially on the hockey front as we got both hockey games to win. We won with the Ducks and we won with the Blackhawks. Then we went into the NBA and I talked about that Laker team, man. The Lakers absolutely blew the doors off the heat, beating 127 to 100. We got the Celtics to win as well. I talked about the Wizards winning. I mean, everything we looked at yesterday pretty much came to fruition. So uh, big day yesterday, guys. I don't know something about Friday nights and me. It's eerie because Friday nights have seen to be doing well. And this, this streak's been going for a while now. But uh, I'm not going to get too excited about it or too cocky with myself. But Friday nights have been good to me. So hopefully we can keep this momentum going. I like some stuff today. Obviously, we'll get into the talks about that a little bit later. Hat probably wants to talk about the fantasy contest because that's the only thing that he seems to win at. <laughs> Jim, I, well, I'm glad you brought that up because I just wanted to know, Are you? I, I know you're excited and all. But don't be too excited because you're ready to get your ass kicked in fantasy by your boy. And we got 20 people that have joined this contest, guys. And we've got, let's see, myself. We've got the evil genius. We've got the dream. Vegas girl. Rizzy Riley. DJ Lope. That's Rick Lopez, the defending champion. We got T-Mac. We got, who is this? E.M. Friedman. LB153410, whoever the hell you are. We got Terry Bassar, Jay Acosta, Kenan Emzer, JP, Super Mario's on there, Fast Eddie, Coach Mosca, G Rose, RSW1916, and Chipotle Addict. So, you know what? Those are all my victims that I just rattled off because I plan on winning today, Dream. My team is stellar, kid. Yeah, whatever. Um, you win fantasy, I win real life. You know what I'm saying? That's just so- <laughs> That's just 
where I'm at, and I'm good with that, by the way. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you keep being the intercontinental champion or, you know what I mean? That's apropos for you because you're a wrestling guy anyway. <laughs> so you keep being the king of the fantasy contest, and I'll be the king of real-life gambling on Fridays. <laughs> there we go, man. There we go. <laughs> Dream, I just looking forward to taking your money again today. Yeah, you can. You know what? You can add a ten dollars, player. <laughs> you feel really? You feel really feeling the ten dollars that much? I, I, got you, dog. You know got what? you. Well, listen, we're, we're gonna we're gonna start pumping it up. I think, man. You know what I'm saying? As we get up to, you know, fifty people, a hundred people, two hundred people. Sure enough, it's gonna be dope. Listen, the contest, I'm kind of excited about it because you're really handicapped. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're really handicapped. You're really handcuffed this weekend with this contest because you don't have the plethora of choices that you usually have. So it's it's really cool. It's really cool to have this contest the way it is right now. I, I like it because right now, if you ask me, now this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to go on the limb here. This really separates the men from the boys because anybody could stumble across, you know, oh, I'm going to start Terrell Pryor this week, and all of a sudden he goes out and has like a three touchdown, you know, 250-something yard game, and you blow up, get like 80 points out of him and win the whole thing. Anybody could do that. That whole Brandon Cooks thing, remember that week he went him? And, and no knock on anybody that picked those guys up, but I'm just saying, to me, that kind of – Sometimes you just got lucky. You just decided I'm going to go with this guy and as fate would have it, he just got lucky. Now, first of all, it's a limited amount of players that you can have because you don't have the same amount of players. Right. It's limited, you know, it's limited your situations. You got to be savvy with the with the money because the, the cap money is kind of messing you up. So right now, to me, is the cream of the crop. You like, if you win this, which ha, I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on you because... I'm not expecting you to do really well because I, I just my, my thing with you is I do feel like a little bit of the rabbit foot had to do with your way. Oh, stop. <laughs> Kid, I got skills, man. I do feel like the rabbit was involved with a little bit of your winning player. I got some skills, brother. <laughs> and I am right now. I think that you really got to have some skills to pull this off. So we'll we'll see. We'll we'll see. What happens with this? I can't wait to come for revolution. Now, listen, moving on with the show, yes. let's talk about some real stuff. Um, the NCAA has announced they are talking about shortening the games. Apparently, the games have gone from three hours and 17 minutes in 2013 to three hours and 24 minutes uh, this season. And what's mind-boggling to me is they're thinking of all these different ways. Now, they have talked about just keeping the clock running, but to me, it's a no-brainer. Keep the damn clock running. Sure. I mean, I know, like, I, what's the talk about? Just, first of all, you know what? The NCAA should just put on their big boy gloves and just have the same damn rules as the NFL. I'm sorry. I, that's just how I feel. I feel they should have the same rules as the NFL. Okay, maybe I'll stay with the overtime being the way they have their overtime set up if they want to keep that set up. The one foot in, I hate that. I agree with you. Have the team two feet in. You're preparing these guys for the NFL. And, and, and here's my thing. In college, you're preparing your college students to work in the real world, okay? So as you're teaching them and you're having them do their work, you're, you're making them accountable the same way that they're supposed to be accountable in the real world. So why play with the rules in college and not make them as accountable to go be in the real world in the NFL. So, first of all, I hate the one foot in. Let's go to two feet. Yeah, all right? right? The other thing I hate in college football, I can't stand the pass interference call because if I was a college football head coach, if you were getting burnt, yeah. I would have you tackle the receiver every damn time because what's the big deal? You get a 15-yard penalty. Mm -hmm. It's better than getting burnt deep. Like, if I was the USC head coach, I'd have been like, look, 
tackle them cats. <laughs> no doubt. I agree with you, Dream. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got to – to me, that was one of, that's one of the biggest rules that bothers me the most is their pass interference. I don't mind the one foot as much as I mind the college football pass interference. And I'm so surprised that you don't see more of – college head coaches coaching their guys to pass interfere when they're getting beat as opposed to getting beat deep because that's i'm telling you unfortunately hey it's in the rules you could play by it i'd I'd be coaching that up right on exactly so what else you got up your sleeve dream before we get into the nfl here kid i don't know if you know this but apparently the cleveland Cavs have gotten involved in trying to stack the deck their damn self because at the end of today they're saying Kyle Korver is going to be a Cleveland Cavalier. I don't know if you're aware of that. I did not know that. That's a really good perimeter shooter right there, man. At the end of the day, if everything goes as it's supposed, as planned, Kyle Korver is supposed to be a member of the Cleveland Cavaliers. By the way, I guess Atlanta trades him to Portland. Portland trades him to Cleveland. They're going to get some first-round draft picks or whatever have you for it. But, dude... This could be a dangerous shot in the arm for the Cavs, as far as I'm concerned. I think this is uh, – I'm not going to – you know, I don't know that they're gearing up to play Golden State in the end because I, I – you know, the jury's still out on this Golden State team. We talked about their inability to play defense, inability to rebound. I know that they're a forefront in the West. I don't know that they're the team to beat in the West. I, you know, the San Antonio Spurs. Before we go, before we go crazy, the San Antonio Spurs are still the San Antonio Spurs, and I think that Golden State's weaknesses were definitely shown last season. A coach like Popovich will probably be able to coach his team before we have Golden State coming out of that West. And I know they're strong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that they're not strong or or one of the strongest. But before Golden State, we give them the nod out of the West. I'm just going to say not so fast because I'm still looking at – I don't believe in the Clippers. I'm sorry. I know the Clippers are improved. I just don't believe in them. I don't know what it is about them. It's like they can't cross it over. But I do believe in the San Antonio Spurs definitely as another option for that West. But nevertheless, that being said – the Cleveland Cavaliers, you add this to kicking it into LeBron and then him getting the two, you know, getting the double team and then kicking it out the Corver to, oh to, 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 to punch you in the face? Oh, my God. Kyle Corver is one of the elite three-point shooters in the league. That cat, no, no kid. That's what I'm saying. I think this is, you know, a lot, there's not been a lot of buzz about this right now, but ooh, this is an ugly addition to the Cleveland Cavaliers' firepower. You are now powering them up to definitely go ham, especially playoff style basketball. And and the thing is about him is that, you know, he doesn't just sit there and throw the ball up every two minutes. No, like he'll take calculated shots. That's what makes him so good. You know, he'll wait till he's like wide open. You know, just shoot and just, and it's a dagger. I mean, between him and J.R. Smith on the outside, forget it. Because if J.R. Smith is not doing that well in the game, I mean, you got Mr. Corver at the helm. Wow, dream. I, I think he's taking a place for uh, Sugar Ray because they wanted to get Ray Allen in there, but he retired. Oh, you got You always got to talk about Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray and the truth. Those are my oh, guys. My the old Celtics team. <laughs> you already know that. Good morning to everybody. We are the SBTV Nation. I apologize about my voice. I am still getting over trying to trying to get over this cold dream. This cold has been going around the state, man. A lot of people are sick here. Crazy. So, well, but, our so weather's good. been bananas. You know, it looks like it's about to just snow about to just drop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like right. In, oh, in, in boatloads on us, but thankfully it's holding down. And I, I got to be honest with you. I'm knocking on wood here. We are into january yes we haven't gotten any type of real snow it snowed yesterday but for us i mean i know down south where we're at it was apocalypse and you know what i mean the end of the world for us that was like it didn't even really snow that was just like a cold day for us so we have been blessed this se- this year this season we've been blessed this year to not really get hampered with snow and i'm keeping my fingers crossed because dude it's been a dope year as far as that's concerned because Snow here, we have gotten pummeled in the past with snow. Yeah, definitely, Dream. Exactly. So, 
Guys, I had a crazy call, man, just uh, dealing with a little bit on the outside here. Uh, <laughs> one of my properties, I got a bonfire burning at the property, and I just realized that there is a potential gas leak problem. So Wait, I'm slow, dealing with all that. Listening in the background, right? Oh my god, I can't. This has got me having anxiety to death right now, kid. Crazy. So I'm listening in the background, and. Hat calls the guy at the house. <laughs> My man is chewing gum. <laughs> All <Yeah>. calm. <laughs> Mind you, has an accent. <laughs> yeah. You're like, nah, it's fine. It's fine. He ain't worried about the fire, but if INS is on your way, he's out of here. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. So what we're doing, guys, just to save money on dumpsters, is when we take wood down, we burn the wood. That's just the way it goes. That's what you're supposed to do. So you can I save break money. every law in the country right now. So my my guy's like, oh, that's a that's they're doing siding on the house. So he's like, oh, don't worry about that pipe. You can cut that pipe. <laughs> Then they're like, oh, it smells like gas. gas. Doing all types of illegal work, burning stuff in the backyard because they don't want to pay for it at dumpster. Oh. <laughs> so now I'm dealing with that. So I've got some major anxiety right now, guys. So I'm just I'm telling about to blackmail my boy. I'm calling immigration. <laughs> if you don't give me a couple of G's, I'm calling immigration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. And I'm, I'm gonna call president. I'm gonna tweet President elect Trump, who is the president now, and let him know there's some illegal activity going on <laughs> out here in Connecticut. President the elect the biggest Trump. show in the world. Wow. Oh my god. So anyway, hopefully my guys are smart enough. I got the plumber. I got Super Mario the plumber going over there to take care of business and uh they're putting the fire out, and they'll continue to do the siding. And hopefully the snow doesn't come for a couple hours, so at least we can get some work done, Dream. No doubt. All right. So, Dream, I think it's about that time. Do you think it's about that time? I think it's about that time to have a conversation about what's going on in the NFL as we are getting ready for the playoffs, guys. So let's talk about it and get right into it. This is the NFL this is the AFC playoff stream, and we got to talk about the first matchup of the day today, which is, let me just pull it up right now. I believe it's in the AFC, and we've got the Raiders at the Texans. Texans Can't wait minus- to get down with this game. It's so exciting as you just don't know what's going to happen at the quarterback position. They are talking about getting the fan with the best Raider gear on gets to play quarterback for the Raiders. No. And the fan with the best Texans gear on gets to play the quarterback for the Texans. Right on. Exactly. <laughs> so the Oakland Raiders are putting Connor Cook in as quarterback versus Brock Osweiler. CC Great. versus the big Brock, baby. <laughs> Under over of 36 and a half. What's that tell you about the quarterback position? Fumbling, stumbling, bumbling. Uh, three and outs, punt. Three and out, punt. Three and out, punt. First one, first down. Oh, great, cool. Oh man, it's gonna be an ugly game. I think, Dream. I, it's you know what? It's gonna be an ugly game. But here's the thing, though. All right. Uh, and when I look at this game, I just go right here and I say to myself that Brock Osweiler and I hate Brock. I don't think Osweiler is a good quarterback at all. We've He's talked not. about it numerous times in the show. Right. However. He has held the quarterback position on this team for 80% of this season. So he is somewhat more capable, in my opinion, than Connor Cook. I mean, we've seen Osweiler have some success. We've seen him done some things. We know that they have a dynamic receiver in DeAndre Hopkins. So we've seen Brock Osweiler at least at the helm of this team and be able to handle it. So I don't expect any a lot of big surprises out of Osweiler. And I think that Osweiler's also been given the ability and been told in an emergency situation, if you don't see anybody open within the first three seconds of dropping back, just take off, you know, start running. Because Osweiler does have the ability to be a little bit mobile. I'm not, I'm not saying he's, you know, uh, 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 Aaron Rodgers. But I've seen Osweiler mobile in a few situations, so he should get on his bicycle and get going. If nothing seems to be open in the first uh, three seconds of this game, I, I adequately think that Osweiler will be a capable game manager as far as the Texans offense is concerned. The thing that Osweiler, that we worry about Osweiler is 16 interceptions. Mm-hmm. 
16 interceptions on the season is dreadful. Brutal. You cannot turn over the ball in this game. I agree with you. Cannot turn over the ball in this game, and the Texans will not be able to, you know, to overcome a lot of turnovers. So the talk today in the locker room with the big Brock should be, hey, listen, if it's not open, run. And if you can't run, just throw the ball out of bounds and don't turn the ball over. We're going to try to let our defense win this game for us. Unfortunately, we were looking to you because our other options are no good. Please don't play us. <laughs> yeah, and 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 the I mean, just the the awful quarterback play of the Houston Texans. I mean, and, and when you look at you know, I mean, I remember last year like DeAndre Hopkins like had massive numbers, sure. and it's like now it's like you can get them pretty cheap in fantasy. It's crazy because they they're just not throwing the ball successfully. No, they're not. And you know what? I mean, they're playing the uh, the field position, the defensive struggle battle kind of thing going on, and you know what? I think this is going to be a low-scoring affair, Dream. You know, you have this Raider team that averages 26 points, but, guys, it's completely skewed because Derek Carr is not in the ball game today. And we got to – I mean, Connor Cook, just going back to going back to Michigan State, it's – he wasn't good in Michigan State, Dream. I'm, I'm, I aware, never, I'm aware of Mr. Cook's resume. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was brutal. So, I mean, you know, looking at this, I, I I don't see any way, shape, or form how Oakland has any success. I mean, where are their heads at now? Well, you know, first of all, their heads are their professional football team, okay? And okay. one player does not dictate whether you win or lose, whether you win or lose for the most part. We've seen bad quarterbacks have success before in the NFL, so I'm not going to go too, too crazy. Bad quarterbacks with good defenses. The Raiders no. do not have a good defense. Uh, and, 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 I, and I agree. I agree with, to that to an extent. Okay? But here's what, here's what keeps you here's what keeps you positive. The Houston Texans don't have a good quarterback neither. So, <laughs> so, so it's all about, you know, the Raiders defense is saying, hey, we got to step up. And the Raiders do have a couple of bright spots on, de- on, on defense. Max has been a beast this season. So they got to step up their defense. I mean, the Raiders don't have a great defense. They don't have a bad defense either. Their defense has been okay. You know what I'm saying? So it, it is time that the defense has to look at each other and they got to step their game up. Raiders also have a running back. I mean, Murray's not been an awful, awful back this season. I mean, he's not killing it in the NFL, but, you know, he's had some success. I don't necessarily think he's going to have a lot of success against this Texan defense. But, you know, if the quarterback handles this in the right way, and this is when you talk about your coaching staff, and by the way, <laughs> that's the one thing. I don't feel that Jack Del Rizzle is the right guy for this type of situation. No, no. I don't feel he is a he's good coach, right... though. I got to give him some credit. He is Say that again. De- he is a pretty decent coach, though, Drew. Dude, I don't, I don't like him in this situation. I okay. mean, I, I think that they, they rode, the, they rode the, the coattails of Derek Carr, who had a phenomenal season. Uh, I saw a lot of out of this Raider team. There's some, to me, there was some lack of discipline spots in some of the positions where they were are. And I definitely do see a team that I know does not, as far as I'm concerned, have the patience offensively. Crabtree and Cooper, to me, are not patient wide receivers. They will get very frustrated if not getting involved in the beginning of this game. They have to have and hold down their patience and try to work with this guy and not be in the huddle saying, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open, throw me the ball because they're going to put him in a situation where he's going to make bad decisions. And that needs to be definitely talk to to this Oakland Raider offense and let them know you cannot put this kid you cannot put the gun to this kid's head and keep bothering him when I'm open I'm open but should the Texans get like a 10 to 3 lead I think things will get antsy and it will cause problems so I I just I, I don't like where the Raiders are I'm sorry I just don't all right so a couple comments on Twitter here first off T-Mac is saying that the Texans wide receivers lead the team in tackles due to Hosweiler's interceptions. This is true. <laughs> All right. DJ, 100 grand, is telling me to take the total of the under in this game. Big Mike is saying, get ready, believe Lind. And let's see. Jay Acosta is telling me that who let Chipotle addict into the fantasy contest? He said he's a pro daily fantasy player. He's a sharp dream. Good. So what? <laughs> so what? Sharps. It's ten dollars. You, 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 listen, if you're not good, then I don't know. Take your ten dollars and leave. I, I don't know what to tell you. He's a sharp. 
It's $10. Kid, I, I'm Fuck the pro here. Back. I'm the pro right now. I'm the pro. That's me. Me, the Mad Hatter. That's He's it. He's a pro fantasy <laughs> player. I love that. <laughs> Listen to the biggest show in a the world. pro fantasy player. Yeah, man. He's showing me the resume right now. Well, I'm good, good luck to this cat. I can't wait to knock him off, too. I'm, I'm loving a pro fantasy player. Okay, but, well, let's just check this out. <laughs> Let me just tell you about how much attention I have with this fantasy today. <laughs> Yes, sir. Matter of fact, let me tell you about how much attention I have with this fantasy for the whole weekend. I put the light up in yesterday so I could concentrate on real life gambling today. That that's the truly spoken of someone who loses all the time. The dream. <laughs> all right. So anyway, get back off the cusp of murdering last night. I am not <laughs> feeling fantasy. By the way, I won't be worried about how many catches DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, has. until until he gets lucky and and wins. Sometime, yeah, and then when I win, it'll still be hey, guess what? Uh, I won it fantasy, but big deal, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, right. Good looking for the for the ten dollars I got on DraftKings. Oh, dream, you know what? Hey, it is what it is, and we will keep it moving. And you know what? I like the Texans to win this game. I I like the Texans too. Oh, dude, I hate betting Brock Osweiler though. Oh, I like the Texans too, but my. My play for the day involves the Texans and another team because I am going to the teaser today is one of my tools to use. We talk about manipulating these spreads at all times. I am going to try to make the safest play that I have possible. And as we get out of this game, let's get into the next game. And that is the Detroit Lions. Yes. Versus the Seattle Seahawks. Lions are getting eight points in the 12th man in century link field in seattle washington the under over is 44 points in this game matthew stafford versus russell wilson talk to me dream (sighs) okay listen i know you guys love seattle i know a lot of people like seattle i know a lot of people talk about the 12th man blah 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 blah, the defense hey this is that look this seattle seahawks team is living off of years past First of all, the most important thing that the Seattle Seahawks don't have anymore is a running game. Their running game has been non-existent since Marshawn Lynch got hurt, and it hasn't been right since they lost the Super Bowl to the Patriots when they should have handed off to Marshawn Lynch instead of throwing that stupid pass, okay? Seattle Seahawks haven't been right since. The defense is extremely overrated, and I don't care what anybody says. You lose Earl Thomas and, and, and some of the other guys... I don't know necessarily that they're 100% healthy, even though they're back there on defense. We've seen this defense in big spots come up short most of the season. Yeah. You know, come up short. And now, last but not least, the most important thing, the offensive line of this Seattle Seahawks team, dude, is absolutely, positively dreadful. I agree. Okay? Okay. Absolute, uh, the offensive line has had Russell Wilson running around for his life. I also have had concerns and talked about most of this season about I feel Russell Wilson's conditioning has been in question this season. I don't know what happened in the offseason. I know he settled down. I know he got a little hottie wife, you know, him and Sierra, you know, tied the knot or whatever they did. I, I'm, I'm not. Are they married? I don't know if they're married or not. I think that they're, I'm pretty sure they're married. I'm I'm not sure, but maybe they're not. Maybe they are. I know that's who who he's involved with. You know, if you look at his pictures, there's some weight around the midsection. Comfortable living, living good, finally embracing who he is. Uh, Unfortunately, I think that that's affected his gameplay this year as far as his conditioning is concerned. I don't like his conditioning. I don't like this offensive line. I know that we struggle with Matthew Stafford in these positions. I know that Matthew Stafford, you know, I've seen him in the last few weeks, not look great, not look good against the second half of the Cowboys. I don't know what happened to him. Again, this week, again, not looking that great against Green Bay. However, eight points, way too many points for the Seattle Seahawks to be given the Detroit Lions as far as I'm concerned. This is the second part of the two-team teaser, gang. This is an NFL teaser. Ties reduced. There's no need to do the ties win because you can't have a tie. But I like seven and a half points. You're going to get 
the Houston Texans plus three and a half so they can lose by a field goal, which is no way. I, I just don't see them losing. I see them winning, not even losing, but you're going to have them plus a field goal. And then you're going to have the Detroit Lions plus 16 and a half points. If Detroit loses, man, if they lose by 16 and a half points today, then, hey, I think you deserve to lose. I, I think I deserve to lose, and I'm willing to, to lose that way. But I just don't see by any stretch of the imagination the Seahawks beating them by 16 and a half points. How do you get 16 and a half? You, you going, you're putting nine points on the spread? No, I got – my the spread that I had, because I you know what, who I use, that, that's, those are the numbers that I have, player, with seven and a half. Oh, okay. That's oh, what, wow, that's so what you, got, I have you caught it number. when it was high. And you, all, you guys all know who I, who I mess with. So all right. I'm, I'm plug them, <laughs> 16 and a half point stream. I wish you the best of luck in it. You know, the teaser does seem pretty um, pretty decent. What I did was I put together a money line parlay. I got the Houston Texans. I got the two favorites, Houston okay. Texans and Seattle Seahawks to move forward and emerge. But I would not be surprised if either one of these teams is a stomach ache as far as the game is concerned. No doubt. I wouldn't be surprised. But, Jim, take a look at the um, the notes real quick here. Yes. Guys, the NFL is here. And you know what? There's going to be a lot of games. We got games today. We got games tomorrow. We got games next week. And we got the Collegiate Football National Championship on Monday. So, you know what? If you're not in love with the games, don't go nuts. Because you got plenty. There's always tomorrow. There's always stuff going on. So just keep that in the back of your brains here. You don't have to go bananas on the first day of the NFL playoffs at all. Because you know what? I've done it before, and it's punched me in the face. So you know what? If these games... I mean, now you're going to get max effort out of these teams. So you know what? You're going to get the A game out of each one. So I wish you the best of luck with your plays. And if you guys got something else that you want to share with the nation, please feel free to hit us up and let us know. What you got up your sleeves as far as it's concerned? What else you got, Dream? As far as that, as far as the NFL is concerned, that would be it. Um, right. Guys, I love the teaser. I don't know how to, te- I, like I said, I don't know how the teaser loses. We got, like I said, the Texans plus three and a half. I got this, the, the Detroit Lions plus 16 and a half. I don't see how that goes down. I'll obviously be a little bit on pins and needles, maybe a little bit with the Detroit game. You know, if I get that one quick score, a uh, uh, kickoff return for a touchdown or a Russell Wilson fumble for a touchdown, something stupid, then you feel even that much more comfortable. I do like both both of those positions. On the flip side of that, I don't really, like I said, I, I'm not really nervous about the Raider game. I, I don't see, I, I'm not nervous about, you know, Connor Cook getting a start. So I'm, I'm good there. Right. Um, real quick, let's move it to college basketball. You got three games of note, Crichton versus Providence. North Carolina versus North Carolina State, Villanova versus Marquette, and Arizona versus Colorado. Four games of note today going down. Uh, North Carolina versus NC State is a huge rivalry game. Um, Also, Crichton versus Providence. I'm expecting Crichton to bounce back. Crichton's lost to Villanova. I think Crichton bounces back in this Providence matchup. I kind of like Crichton, but I'm probably not getting involved in college basketball today. I got enough going on with the NFL, so that's probably where I'm going to stay at. Um, One more game of note is James Madison, Youngstown State, is an NCAA college football game today. I don't know if you guys are on it. If you are, best of luck to you. I don't have an opinion about that, Um, but I know that game is going on as well. And last but not least, I'm going to dip it over to the NHL. I like the San Jose Sharks today to bounce back off of their loss. I like the San Jose Sharks tonight, and I like the Edmonton Oilers. They're playing that New Jersey Devils team. I think Edmonton bounces back, not bounces back. I think Edmonton goes in there and murders that uh, that team. Yeah, see, Vegas Girl says that Russell Wilson is married. Baby is on the way, and yeah, didn't have sex till he got married. That's definitely will mess you up a little bit too. <laughs> All right. On that note, so that's where that's at. All right. <laughs> on that note, guys, we're gonna get out of here. We're getting ready for tomorrow, the big show. We got the big games going on in the AFC and the NFC, and we could recap what goes down today as well. So, Dream, what do you got to do to close out of here, brother? 
Thank everybody that came in. That's Terrence Max, Snoopy Betts, Terry Bouchard, Sports or College, AB Link, Cash Action Bet, Shane Whitehead, uh, Swing Cat Sides, Jeff Ryan, Marlon, Bang the Book, Wayne Yarborough, Rick Lopez, JP, Vegas Girl, 92661, Buster Car, LVCC, Fast Eddie 72. I'm the dream. Always remember who you with. Make the most of each and every day because you can't get this time back. All right, guys, I got to run to my property and uh, make sure that the neighborhood didn't burn down. So I got to get there now. But, guys, we love you to death. Go out there. Go easy with these games, unless you love it. Make all your dreams a damn reality and get that money. Let's go.